Hunt for Greatness Podcast. Okay, Pasa, my fishy amigos. Welcome to the Hunt for Greatness Podcast. This is another fishing episode, and I got my boy eric williams on what's up eric what's up man how you doing uh, it's been a whole two weeks since i've seen you <laughs> it's been so long since i saw you dude i was starting to miss you a lot dude <laughs> yeah dude it's your birthday we'll just go ahead and let people know what it the is. date is but it it's is, your birthday man. happy birthday dude yeah dude it's a new shirt i had to wear it especially for this podcast what'd you say new shirt goofing <laughs> new shirt goofing man new shirt goofing yeah gotta go ahead and wear it out God, you look good. 33? I, yeah. I, I feel like I need to uh, put bunk beds in here. I've been in here so much lately. <laughs> we should uh, do karate in the garage. Yeah. I got a samurai sword and all that. Dude. We can do karate in the garage to together. Yeah, like stepbrothers. There you go. <laughs> so we're going to talk today. I need to get away from this mic a little bit because I'm too loud. Um, we're going to talk about Spanish mackerel and false albacore. So we just did a podcast about uh atlantic bonito if you guys haven't seen that go check it out um so now we want to talk about the next fish to kind of roll in after atlantic bonito or our spanish and our false albacore right yes sir our spring when it's really spring when spring has sprung Mm -hmm. that's how you know like you know the the bonito come through and then you know it's about to heat up yeah following the glass minnows most of the time and the spanish too right that's right yeah they're all eating glass minnows yeah, that's typically what we'll see is uh, just the influx of bait, and then the predators will follow the bait in. So, uh, you know, once the Atlanta Bonita show up, it's time to get excited because those big, bigger Spanish will show up there early. And uh, they're a lot of fun to target, especially if, like, for example, if you're trying to get kids involved, that's one of the most fun fish, in my opinion, that you can catch, Gosh, especially for kids. It's so fun on light tackle with spinning rod, mm-hmm. throwing jigs out. This is my favorite jig to throw right here it's a big nick jig it's my favorite one to throw for spanish so i i jig these off the bottom and cast Mm -hmm. so i don't want to get too far ahead but like he was talking about spanish being a good fish for kids to catch me and my son went out and he was four at the time and we took these and he was catching he probably caught i think we caught like 15 spanish and he probably caught at least half of them by himself with mm-hmm. no help and we were just watching them roll in on a falling tide they're following those glass minnows yeah we could see them kind of busting on the top every time we'd see a fish on the top we'd hook up and it was for a good 40 35 minutes 45 minutes i mean it was but you're right like even kids can cast on these fish and catch these fish, and they're so much fun mm-hmm. on light tackle yeah, that is the cool thing about Spanish is there's a lot of signs that are going to tell you they're there, unlike some of the other fish we have around here. What are some of those signs you look for? Um, most of the time, I'm the first thing I'm scanning for is birds. Birds. Yeah. Bird gang, baby. Pull up on them birds. Yeah, and, and, and if you're fishing an inlet in any of the eastern states, there's going to be a lot more pressure right around the edges of that inlet. But if you can get out a little bit and get away from the crowds, you're going to have a lot better day. It's more fun. Look for the birds. The birds are going to tell you most of the time if they're going to be hitting baits on the surface. So that's the first thing you're probably looking for when you pull out of the inlet. Yeah, is those birds. First thing I'm looking for. Yeah, and a, and a little tip for uh, so you're say so you're new to this and you're you're trying to get into catching Spanish. Get on Amazon and buy you a twenty thirty dollars set of binoculars and just leave them Ooh, on the boat. Oh, I need to get me a pair of those. Yeah, because you can. I mean, by the by the naked eye, you can see a mile or two. Um, but you get those binoculars, you can really, okay, I think I see something. Let me check with the binoculars mm. and that'll, that'll get you away from those crowds. Yeah, for sure. Cause, cause a lot of the times when I'm looking for Spanish, I'll come out of the inlet and I'll just ride, I'll ride North or I'll ride South and I'll just kind of look and see where stuff seems to be moving around a little bit, where your pelicans are sitting on the water. Uh, most time that's men hating when you see pelicans sitting on the water, but those gulls, I guess they're gulls, are diving on glass minnows. I mean, that's it's a tail. If you see white water, mm-hmm. that's either your gulls diving or it's your fish busting. So if you're out there and there's no white caps and you see, I look for white water. Yeah. And you can see that far away, like with the naked eye, I feel like. Yeah. But these fish, they come up and they go down. We'll, we'll start with Spanish because they're a little different than false albacore. We'll st- so you see Spanish busting on the top. How would you describe that? Uh, like you said, uh, it just looks like little flashes of silver just darting out of the water. And usually you'll, I mean, if it's a school of a few hundred, you're going to see 10, 15, 20 fish at a time just swiping bait on the surface. 
So it's pretty obvious if if they are hitting on the surface. Yeah, let's talk let's talk about the surface for the Spanish and the false albacore and how to approach a school if you see it like that. And yeah. then you can tell your story that you were telling me well, about. Well, the it. and the, the false albacore is going to be like a washing machine. Washing like, machine. <laughs> it's I mean, completely it, different. so with the Spanish, I've noticed that usually a couple of fish will come completely out of the water. Yeah. With those, not as much with the albies. I mean, I have seen albies do that. But it's more span. Like if I see a long profile of a fish, I'm like, okay, those are Spanish. If I see a washing machine, okay, those are albies. Yeah, and you can catch them pretty much the same way with the same baits, right? Yeah, for, for the most part, I do. I have noticed that the false albacore like a smaller profile. So like the sting silvers, they're my favorite. I don't even know what those are. That's the little metal. Um, it's got a, a half inch metal sphere. Well, not sphere, more like a cylinder on the front, and then on the back is just a skirt of metallic plastic. Ooh, I don't think I've ever used those. Yeah, they're my favorite for for a false albacore. Yeah, yeah, and you can get them. Ah. You can get them up to an ounce, ounce Treble and a quarter. Hook? No, it's an inline single hook. Okay. Yeah, I, I wish I had brought some, but uh, blues and greens are my favorite. Blues and greens. Okay, mm-hmm. for albacore when you see albies. Mm-hmm. So, so. Tell me if you think this is correct. So if you see a washing machine of white water and it looks like a lot of commotion, that's usually albacore. And if you see like some fish busting the surface, silver flashing, usually Spanish, right? Yeah, and a, a thing to note is with the Spanish mackerel, they're going to be more stationary, whereas the false albacore, they're moving 5, Fast. 10, 15 mile an hour. Like they're, they're here, they're gone. So they, that's very true. They're moving. And you talked about this during the Atlantic Bonito podcast, but seeing which direction you think the fish are going is important when you're trying to sight cast a school, right? For sure. Yeah. You want to get in front of the fish. Yeah. And uh, another tool, like say you're you're on a school and you're trying to cast on them, try to hit the edges of the school because you don't want to run the fish down. And uh, another way you would run the fish down is if you motor in too fast. Talk about that. Talk about the the correct way, in your opinion, to pull up on a school of fish that are on the top that you want to cast on. Well, it's kind of like you're trying to su- suppress the excitement and anxiety because it's natural oh, to want to throw that thing in 5,000 RPMs <laughs> and get there as fast as you can, But I, which is fine when you're leaving a school to go to another one. But you don't want to get too close with that motor revved up really high because it'll actually panic the fish and push them down and then you don't know if they're going to pop up in a few minutes if they're going to move from where you're at so i like to stop a few hundred yards and just kind of slowly ease into them when i'm trying to approach the fish i like it so a high rpm is going to scare those fish and that's my experience too yeah trying to be uh, aware of other people that may be trying to get on that same school is important as mm-hmm. well, right? Yeah, for sure. And, and unfortunately, the more people are on it, the less luck you're going to have, in my experience. So you flying up on another guy is going to hurt you just as much as if he does that to you on the next school. So if you're fishing near somebody, y'all try to work together and not blast in on each other. I've had both things happen. I've had me and another guy out there, and we're both being respectful and pulling up on the school and we're getting our shots like we're getting three four shots which is kind of a lot because these fish for in my opinion what i've seen they don't stay up very long most of the time i mean certain days i think they can stay up for like 30 seconds but most days it's like 10 seconds and they're like they'll come up they'll go down they'll come up they'll go down but we were being respectful of one another and we got great shots in and we both caught fish and then i've had other days where i've had people run up on the schools and scare them down and i've probably definitely been that guy that's been overly excited and run up on a school too fast and scared him down i've done it with no other boats plenty of times but when i see another boat i try to i try to either be respectful of them or find another school i mean yeah and and usually when the fish are here and show up there is more than one place you can catch them like you said just go north or south and sometimes you may see a few fish inside jump out a couple miles they may be much thicker out there so be open to, to travel a little bit when you're targeting these fish. And those binoculars are going to help you not travel as much, too. Like yeah. If you can use that tool, that's a good tool. I'm going to have to get me a pair of those. Yeah. And, they, they, I mean, nowadays they make them nice ones for 30 40 bucks. Yeah, I need that. Yeah. I saw some mallards today, and I was like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure they were mallards, but I needed some binoculars to see them. But, yeah, that's a that's a good tool to have. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Tell me that story you were going to tell me about your video. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I had started recording this year and a half ago-ish. I think it was, yeah, about a year and a half ago. 
we were there was multiple boats chasing Spanish, and uh, I had run up on a school, and there was another boat that had got there about the same time as me. Well, I'm casting these fish. I left my motor in gear, you know, just I cast and and just easing up. So I hook up on a fish. I'm reeling the fish in. All of a sudden, there's line across me. I'm like, this dude is done casting across my boat. Like I'm ready to jump. I'm about it's to over jump your up. boat. Yeah, the, the, the line is is hit me in the chest. Oh wow! So I'm like this this dude is done cast it over my boat. I stay calm. I don't get mad because I'm like I got to get this line out of the boat without getting hooked. So I'm calm. I'm like I can't believe this dude. I'm, should I say something? I'm 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 ready to. <laughs> I'm mad at this point. So <laughs> I, I I hand pull the line up across the boat and I toss it on the other side closest to him. I'm like you're good, man. I let it go. So I get home and I watch my video back. Well, I had left my boating gear and when I leaned to the side of my boat, I had cut right across the fish and I cut right in the path of that dude that had casted. Oh. So I'm out there thinking it's my fault and or thinking it's, thinking his, it's fault. his fault and yeah. it's my fault because I didn't take my boat out of gear. So learn from me that if you're going to be fishing near people, try to take your boat out of gear. Don't get too close. Um, try to work together. Actually talk to the people. Yeah. Because you say, Hey, I'm a I'm a respect you getting to these fish, you do the same for me. That happened with you and I last year. I don't know if you remember. I think we so. We talked to a guy and we were like, Hey, we're not gonna run up on the fish. He's like, All right, I won't either. So like you can work together and Yeah, fish. okay, because I remember doing something like that. So we were together. Yeah. What what boat were we on my boat? Yeah. Uh huh. And it was a guy in a, a really nice white bay boat that was catching okay. them by Was itself. that when we lost that big Spanish? Yes. Okay, all right, yeah, yes. I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. Eric lost a monster out there on uh, what? What did you hook that fish on? Was it one of these? Yeah, it was one. Yes, diamond one jig? of the diamond jigs. That's yep. what Eric caught a a massive span. I mean, these Spanish are huge, and they're eating small little glass minnows. This is also one of my favorite baits for Spanish. But uh, so yeah. when you hooked that Spanish, were you jigging off the bottom, or were you cast and retrieving? We were both that day. They would only hit the jig. We were jigging. Uh, we we caught on the bottom. Yeah, off the yes. bottom. Okay. And all of a sudden, they they surfaced with birds. We ran at them, and I made that one cast, and it hit it and just screamed drag. I remember hearing the drag peel. Yeah, and I I wasn't recording, so like I didn't realize I wasn't recording until after he had stopped his run. But yeah, we we oh, lost he was that peeling. fish. He, he was smoking. He head head shook like a bass and kicked it. So that's a good point. So. These you can mark these Spanish mackerel on your screen. Sometimes they don't come all the way to the top. Is that more of an early morning thing as well? That top, or did they do that throughout the day? You think? Yeah, in my experience, seven to eight o'clock in the morning, a little bit after daylight, is when I've seen them hit the surface. So, oh, that gets me amped. Yeah, it dude. doesn't. It doesn't mean that they aren't there if you don't see them. <sighs> That's like such a cool time of year around here. Spanish mackerel are a super cool fish that we have. Like, what a what a lifesaver. Yeah. Like, they are so much fun to catch. They and, are. And they're everywhere. I mean, they're everywhere. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a fun fish for me, it's especially like, you know, spring gives us that opportunity to switch up what we're targeting. So you can go for Spanish today, Bonita tomorrow, uh, Atlanta Benito the following day. Yeah. Go in the marsh and hit drum. Flounder starting to show up. You we get it. It's the best time of year. It's the best other than time. fall. Yes. It I love spring and fall. That's my favorite. So with the Spanish, when you're jigging on the bottom, you're gonna want to mark them on your screen first, right? Yeah, usually you'll see the bait. So you'll, you'll see that if you see the bait, are you gonna drop and jig if you see bait schools on your screen yeah I'm, it'll right. and it'll look like a big mass whatever color you have yours set to mine is red so i'll see a big big circular mass in the shape of the bait ball and actually around the bait you'll see your squiggle lines that's your spanish and that's your spanish that are circling that bait they like they'll corral and just slice 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 so there are spanish sitting underneath that bait ball well just... it could be under it could be beside it could be above you'll you actually see them in the water column so it it depends on what they're doing that day. You can jig them. You could troll. If, if you know there's a line of bait on this contour, because a lot of times they'll follow the contours, you can troll that contour with your uh, with your planers and your Clark spoons or your Yozuri's or Rapala XRs or whatever bait you choose. But a lot of times when they're not surfacing, there's a lot of ways you can catch them. Yeah. Okay. So trolling. Do you know much about trolling for Spanish? I don't like to troll. Um, I'm spoiled 
you know, you we're the same way. We fish enough that we we've got to the point where we want to sight cast everything. Yeah, that's what I want to do. So I don't troll a lot, but I have trolled for them. And I know that you can use the Yozuris for those as well. Yozuri deep, deep divers. divers. Yeah. yeah. And any, I mean, any brand, you can you can get some cheap ones from, from Dick's that'll work as long as it dives, you know, five, at least five foot below the surface and deeper. How fast do you think you're trolling with those? Uh, seven, eight mile an hour. I don't know the knot comparison, um, but yeah. It's probably five to seven knots. Yeah, seven, seven, eight mile an hour in order to get Spanish in it. And here's a trick. So say you're trolling and you're you keep catching bluefish, you're going too slow. Ah, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, bluefish bluefish are a, not as effective feeder. Well, I shouldn't even say that. Bluefish will hit a bait at a slower speed than a Spanish will because the Spanish have excellent vision and they can see what it is. So you got to get fast enough that they they reactionary bite. Like they don't see they don't have a chance to see something they don't like. That's right. Basically. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And so I know I'm jumping all over the place, but these things are just popping in my head. So if you're trolling or we'll keep it on fishing. If you're fishing for Spanish, what size of leader do you like to use and what kind? Fluoro? Yeah, I always use fluoro for everything. Okay. I know that like you'll listen to guides talk about it and they're like we couldn't afford to eat if we use fluoro all the time, which I completely understand. Yeah. yeah. So if you're you're dead set on not trying to spend a bunch of money, you can get away with mono, especially in the schools. But my logic is I'm trying to be effective with my time, so I'll spend six, seven, eight extra bucks and get something that's crystal clear in the water. For sure. And I like 20 to 30 pound for them as well. Okay, because they do have teeth. Yeah, very, okay. very. And you need to check your leader, just like for the Atlantic Bonita. Make sure you keep checking it because they'll, they'll cut you off. Yeah, and don't put your fingers in their mouth. Oh, no. <laughs> now, the false albacore do not have teeth, and yeah. that's the biggest difference between the Atlantic Bonito. Or the, the easiest way to tell is that Atlantic Bonito have teeth, false albacore do not have teeth and the false albacore we talked we talked about bonito dying fast but in my opinion if you're not going to keep the false albacore or use it for bait get it back in the water as fast as possible because they're so much fun to catch and they die fast have you noticed that how fast they die yeah yeah and if you nick those lungs at all it's over like they'll bleed out like what do you mean nick their lungs like so say you're mishandling them and you hit their lungs like your fingers slip like you'll you'll bleed them out. Really I didn't fast. know that. Yeah, you gotta be careful handling them. Yeah, I usually will grab them by the tail and drop. Yeah, them. you're safe to do that. But if you like grab underneath and your fingers slip in those lungs, they're real delicate. Like in their gills. Yeah. Oh, yeah, gills. Wow. I've been saying lungs. Gills. Yeah. 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 I was like, damn, these things got lungs, boy. <laughs> no, gills. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't even y'all. know about these lungs. No. Yeah. So okay. All right. That makes sense. Like, and I need to know stuff like that for people that might be on my boat fishing that aren't as experienced. Like, keep your fingers out of there. Yeah. Let's, be careful they're they're not as like you a redfish they're a lot tougher yeah but even then you still shouldn't grab the gills but yeah um yeah false albacore extremely sensitive fish i mean how awesome is that fish they're Drag they're fun peeler, man dude that's another really good one for kids it is dude that'll ruin you man like you you hook up on a fish and it makes a hundred yard run <sighs> just as fast you'll you'll have your drag set and it'll be shaking your hand from the fish trembling yeah it does just little rocket ships yeah they are they're like little torpedoes yeah i remember the first time i hooked up on one like two years ago it might have been about two years ago i was like is this real (laughs) like is this fish really smoking my line down like that and i had to call all my boys i'm like hey you got to come do this you got to come do this i'm calling my boys from in inland because that i mean there there's not much that feels like that on light tackle around here. I mean, that is serious. That's top notch, man. It's top notch. The Atlantic Benito feels similar. Yeah. But I think the Albies kind of fight better. I, they fight harder, in my that, opinion. That's what I think. Yeah. They're very similar, like you said. I think the Benito will give out before the, the false albacore will. Yeah. So, But, yeah, I mean, they're a lot of fun. So, use the same size fluoro for the albacore as well 20 to 30 i'll i'll get away with a, a lighter because they don't have teeth okay that's so what I'm, i was wondering for false albacore i'd like to fish 10 pound line so that you can get those far casts because these fish are really moving fast so, yeah so you may cast and by the time your bait hits that water they have moved 20 yards like you you got to get ahead of those fish and, and i like 10 pound line because you can really cast it yeah. and you can get away with 10 to 15 pound leader for them yeah, that's interesting because I usually I think I just throw probably twenty or something like that on there. Yeah. I usually have twenty or thirty on there in the ocean just because most of those fish have teeth and it's like 
that's that's another thing. If you're not like specifically targeting it, it's not worth it to downsize and run the risk of losing it on a big Spanish or something. Yeah. So like in the fall, it's we have legit just masses of of false albacore show up. You know what you're gonna catch on those days, but in the spring you may have a mix of both. So uh, Spanish on live bait. You want to talk about that? Yeah. You uh so. This year, I fished a little bit um, out of Oak Island, and I learned that what those guys like to do there is when the mullet run is they will actually take the mullet and run live bait rigs, which is basically like a king rig, but set up for mullet. And they'll hook their, their fish. They, they Some of them even run two mullet per rig, and they'll actually just let them swim out the back of the boat or slow troll them. And you can catch trophy Spanish mackerel out of Oak Island doing that. Big so, ones. Big ones, Yeah. I've got a video. It's called COVID fishing and I'll link it. I'll put it right here for y'all. That's exactly what I did. It was to a mullet per treble hook mm -hmm. and it was, uh, like the wire King leader and they were smoking it, dude. They smoked a craft master spoon as well. I'm pretty sure. So t you, you said you like the craft master spoon. Yeah. Yeah. Ca cast master, cast master. I'm yeah. thinking of, furniture dude yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a furniture furniture repair man i'm thinking of furniture cast yeah, master. master yeah cast master so i i think i did catch one on a gold do you like gold yeah you actually uh turned me on to that last year for surf fishing yeah yeah so i i went out and bought some and gold uh cast masters one of the best baits they're to expensive catch they are but they work man yeah you want to put 30 pound leader on yeah, that yeah <laughs> so they're very heavy and, and the way they're balanced is they have a lot of action in the water they work very good in the surf yeah so what you're talking about is live bait so get your cast net guys go out there catch some mullet uh when you put your mullet in a bucket use the aerator i do yeah to keep them alive yep okay so keep your mullet alive and we put basically what we did was put a mullet on each treble of a live king rig which you can buy already in the store already made up for you and then yeah. I just attached that to a swivel and tossed it right off the back, like you said. That's right. I opened my bail up and let it. It was on a conventional. Yeah, those those big Spanish will smoke them, man. God, they're everywhere for a couple of weeks, like yeah. a few weeks down there. They're, I mean. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. That's when I was taking the kayak out there, and I hooked up on a lot of good fish, but I just couldn't land them. I, I struggled the days that I went. but uh, Hooking up on Spanish? I was hooking them, but I couldn't land them. They were breaking... Well, no, they were just getting off. They weren't hooking very well for some reason. Isn't it wild how they act out there? They're, it's completely different than Wilmington. It's completely different. They are fired up, yeah. dude. And there's like a hundred boats out there when I was out there. Yeah, same. hundred boats and all around me. everybody's catching. Everybody's <laughs> catching. I mean, they're darting under my boat when yeah. I get them to the boat. I mean, they're dark. They're so fast. And they're big ones. They're fatties, dude. Yeah. It's really cool. That's a fun way to catch them. And you can make those rigs yourself if you'd like. I mean, you can buy them for like five, six bucks a piece. But if you wanted to make them, you could too. Like using your, uh, I think, number three to number five liter, steel liter. You can make them yourself. Is it cheaper? Probably. Uh, I, I, no, probably not. Probably is about I'd, the same. I'd say if, if you're trying to custom make your rigs to like a certain length and poundage, then it's worth it. But realistically, just buy them and move on. Yeah. Because it's a, a headache to make them um spanish in the surf you want mm -hmm. to talk even though that that's a little later in the summer yeah i think the the spanish in the surf are more consistent when we have the mullet run when all the mullet that are here throughout the summer make their transition down so and they're right up in the breakers yeah they're they're up closer than the breakers yeah. i mean they're all the way to the sand the uh the bait and so the spanish actually will come almost all the way up there too i've they'll, seen them do it push right up yeah crazy dude it's a lot of fun i mean you you got there and catch them uh around the tide changes like they're they're a lot of fun but you're gonna get wet too yeah i mean you, <laughs> but by then your water temp's what like 80 it's still warm then yeah yeah and that's that's really right before they shut down yeah like they come up close and then they're gone yeah after that it seems like i feel like they follow them they follow the mullet out of here they just follow them all the way to wherever they go, don't yeah. they? Yeah, like right now they're starting to catch them in Florida, the Spanish. So they're working their way up. Yeah, I feel like they are. Well, yeah, they definitely are. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about surf fishing. We'll do a surf fishing podcast, but I just wanted to bring that up about the Spanish because I think that's so cool to be standing on land catching. I caught some pretty nice Spanish from the beach casting that 
yeah that cast master spoon that was my go-to that gold and i caught you know even in the ocean i'd still use that and yeah. they would eat it well i i was uh there there at the end last year when the spanish were still here i got to where i was just I would take that gold uh, cast master and just run one rod out the back and just ride the beach looking just to see what I could see. And I would hook up on Spanish just doing that. Really? Yeah, just slow trolling it. How fast were you going? I was going five to seven mile an hour, six, seven mile an hour then too. But and just one were... rod, just catching them. So, Dude, that's it's, it's cool, crazy. man. They're, they are. They're everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good fish to learn on. If you're So say you're new, you you just got a boat this year, you're trying to get used to going out in the ocean to catch fish targeting spanish is a great way to get accustomed to what you're doing out there absolutely yeah spanish mackerel is not my favorite fish to eat but do you eat the span do you eat spanish i put them back? small yeah yeah okay so i do eat them the best way that i found to eat them is ceviche ceviche do you ever eat ceviche like i have had it okay so I just want to talk about this because I just learned this last year that you can actually make Spanish mackerel ceviche. It's not fishy. It's not oily like a mackerel normally is. And it is phenomenal. I put lime juice. Or I put mostly lemon juice, a little bit of lime juice, red onions, cilantro, mangoes or pineapple or whatever kind of fruit you want to do to kind of sweeten it up. And uh, some, I said onions. I, oh, I put some jalapenos in there with it. And I'll just eat them on, like, uh, pita chips. Mm -hmm. So good. So you would never expect Spanish to make good ceviche. But it's phenomenal. Yeah, another good way to eat, uh, and this is bluefish too, is to smoke them. The smoke will take the uh, fishiness out. Oh, and I, I need to I try have it had like that. that. It's very good. With smoke Spanish? So I've had a lot of smoked bluefish. And it's good? Yeah, yeah. I always throw blues back because well, they're such a trash fish. You got that fish. Traeger sitting over there. We need to we need to try that to well, smoke could, some. Yeah, we should definitely do a catch and cook blue fit because our chopper blues come around too. I don't want to get distracted, but during this same period of time, sometimes we get a push of chopper blues. Do you ever catch those? I've never caught them. They're so crazy, dude. Yeah, I've I was actually talking to Travis from Forty Three Two Fishing about this, and I'm like, I've been fishing here for a few years, and I've never caught the chopper blues. Yeah, yeah, I've caught them I'd inside, like uh near the inlets mm -hmm. of uh topsail yeah. right in that area I've, that's where i've caught them but they come right in on the surf yeah supposedly i've never that's cool yeah that is cool so spanish false albacore i know i'm forgetting some stuff what am i forgetting um that's why we got two fish brains here guys because if i'm forgetting something eric will remember i mean your real sizes you can yeah use let's the talk same about that two, i mean two thousand to four thousand you're gonna be fine you don't really need anything bigger than that the argument would be for a uh, more line capacity for false albacore because you're gonna have your la larger runs. If you're in a boat, yeah, you. I mean, your boat's gonna. You're fine. Yeah, you're. You fine. can get by with any of that. I wouldn't. I don't say you don't need to go spend three hundred dollars on a reel. You can get by with a. I mean, a, a seventy five dollar reel will be fine. Yeah, pin fierce. That's like yeah. seventy five bucks. Yeah, and it's straight. I got like ten any, of them. Yeah, you don't need anything fancy. Um, we talked a little bit about the baits. Uh, Bait sizes, I don't think are as important with them, just because most of the time you're going to be catching the fish in masses. Right. So it's a reaction uh, bite, right? Yeah, I, th I think so. I think so. I mean, they're you catch them in your schools most of the time where they're just fired up because of the bait. So, um, rods. I mean, anything from six to twelve, eight to seventeen, ten to twenty, they'll all work. Yeah, um, I did have one snap of Fenwick on me. Oh, really? Yeah, I had a. Uh, false albacore snap of Fenwick, but I was kind of high stick. I was kind of lifting him out like I shouldn't have been, but yeah, I think I think that's pretty much it, man. Yeah, yeah. So what's about when do you think they roll in here? What do you know, like a water temp or a time of year that people need to? I be? I feel like they're going to show up more a little bit towards the end of May. End of May, okay. Yeah, yeah. middle to end of May, in my experience. And your water temp then is like. 60 mid 60s five yeah, yeah something like that yeah yeah because the water temp today in the river was 59.5 okay so it was a falling tide to all the i guess probably warmer water was falling out but mm -hmm. that's pretty high i mean it was 45 a month ago yeah so it's 59 where i was at today 59 yeah i mean we're once we can get through these like cold blast it's going to be pretty much 60 70 degree weather for a while so you're going to be out there fishing this year. For sure. You're going to be out there slaying. Hope you're going so. to be slinging houses. Hope so. <laughs> so. If you guys need a house, you need to sell your house, you call Eric Williams. Yep. 
greatest realtor on the in the on the face of the planet on both sides <laughs> of Mississippi, Eric Williams. You guys call him uh, E Williams Realty on Instagram. On Instagram, follow me on YouTube, Eric Williams Fishing. Um, if you need to buy or sell real estate, give me a call. I can point you in the right direction. If I don't handle that, um, if you guys have any questions about anything, you're not sure, you're not ready, you're thinking about it. I'm happy to help you. Yeah, for I'm sure. not pushy. I point you in the right direction, and when it's time, it's time. There you go. Well, I know who's selling my next house and helping me buy a new house. That's going to be you, Big Daddy. And you're starting a podcast soon. I am, yeah. And it, you may have started it by the time we release this. Do you have any idea what your, the name of your podcast? Can you tell me a little bit about it real quick? What yeah, uh, so my my podcast is going to be more geared towards like people of our area in North Carolina, Wilmington area, um, branch out from there. Uh, my goal would be just to kind of target people in general, like, say you're really good at at this or you have this special talent or you're known for this i want to talk to you about that and of course if i run it through my youtube page i'm going to have my fishing stuff as well and i also love to hunt so i want to incorporate that just the same i know that my channel is mainly fishing but my life is far from only fishing so I want to incorporate a little bit of everything because that's how I act and roll is, is always doing something different. So yeah, I want to I'm be the same similar. way. That's probably why me and you get along. Yeah. Yeah. We're always into something. Yeah. So it'll be a little about, about everything really. Yeah. And, cool. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm excited. excited. I'm excited. Yeah. I'll have you on. I can't sure. wait to go on your podcast. Yeah. Dude. So yeah, you guys go over to Eric's channel, check out his fishing videos. He has awesome fishing videos. We fish pretty much the same area. We do a little bit of venturing out. You guys make sure you go over there and subscribe to his channel and check some of his videos out. Don't forget, give us a thumbs up if you like this video. If there was anything we didn't cover that you want to hear us talk about, please leave it in the comment section because we'll be glad to do that. If there's another podcast or subject that you guys want us to tackle, leave it in the comments. We will definitely consider that. We're always sitting around. Mostly Eric comes up with these ideas. We're sitting around always running stuff by each other. So you guys' input is important to us. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. Help us out. That helps us out when you subscribe to the channel or when you like the video. So we appreciate you guys. All of Eric's uh, fans out there that are watching this, I appreciate you guys for watching. And thank you so much, Eric, for yeah, coming man. on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you guys. Hunt for Greatness Podcast.